नमस्ते नमस्ते सर नमस्ते सर What did you say? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Very good. Every day is Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, welcome again, my friends. We are, we are, in a session. Hammer the delusion. We can say in one word that delusion is the cause of all the suffering. You remove the delusion from the mind, and there will be no suffering at all. We have discussed in detail what exactly is the delusion, but there is one understanding that needs to be kept in mind all the time. Where is that? Example. Take an example. I switch on the light. So when I switch on the light, the shape and the size of the room neither increase nor decrease. What you are talking, we know it. Yes, I know that you know it. I am just so light is nothing but like a knowledge. Light. Now when you switch on the light, it is nothing but but the knowledge the knowledge does not change anything knowledge does not increase does not decrease anything in our life huh? just wait where i am taking you to <clears throat> so if the impurity of the mind is there present i need to practice 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 i need to listen consistently listen learning contemplation and practice both are required so on saturday's session i talk about that you don't need any practice you have to analyze everything what we are learning if you don't analyze you will not receive you will not uh, reach to that state why i said why i raised this topic Saturday's session, you intellectually understand. For some time, the ignorance is gone, and you say, "Yes, I am into that state." For how long you remain into that state? Tell me, how long? Twenty-four by seven. You are already done. Then you attend the session just for a play and fun. But if you do not remain in that state, it indicates there are a lot of impurities in the mind present that needs a purification and for the purification we need to practice 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 <clears throat> so that two things comes out <clears throat> every time i listen to it i understand i do the practice so for a couple of hours my mind remains in that state isn't it Uh, you all have been doing it for a couple of years so we continue to live into that state but that state is not maintained 24 by 7 why it is because of the mind impurity of the mind amassing all the doubts i will remove all the doubt why should i remove the doubts and all our teachers are there so every day you wake up in the morning until you sleep check your state of the mind does the state of the mind remains the same if it is so practice is not required and if it is not then you should not leave the practice even on a single day whatever it takes but if you leave the practice on one day why you leave the practice on one day because of the delusion of the mind no no i have very commitment i have lot of commitment you know i am busy you are busy because of the delusion there is no other reason 
you leave the practice, you postpone it, you delay it, it shows, it indicates the mind is living in the that state of the laziness, craziness, obsession. That is why you leave the practice. You all are seekers. That's why I'm talking about this. I don't talk about these higher principles in other sessions. I'm fully busy. It is your delusion. That's why you escaped the practice. That's why you did not attend it. Simple reason. Find out the time. When you find the time, when your mind is inspired to reach to that state of that state of mind that lives 24 by 7. If you are internally inspired and motiva motivated, how can you leave one session? You don't leave the session because of me. You don't leave the session because of the knowledge, <clears throat> because of the understanding. Why? Because you realized, you understand, that state of the mind, that state of awakening, that state of realization does not remain 24 by 7. Did I clear this issue? So now you have to check yourself and you have to contemplate and reflect yourself. So why I picked up the topic last time, I briefly said there are six seven, seven topics that we have covered in Hammer the Delusion, starting from the... So out of these seven topics, one of the seven states of the mind is causing the delusion that I am not able to realize during the day and that ignorant mind takes over and I fall back into the delusion. <clears throat> Got it? Yes, I got it. So first, first state of the mind is the foolishness. I did talk about it. So remember this by heart. Now, why should I remember foolish? You know, I'm not fool. Delusion makes us fool. I know that we are not fool. We are wise. That is why we are suffering from stress. <laughs> that is why we have a lot of stress. The first is the foolishness, means what? Living unconsciously without awareness of our thoughts and actions. Second is the scattered mind. Because of the foolishness, the mind is scattered. Or you can say the isolated mind. Third, attachment and detachment. Attachment and aversion, you can say. So I'm foolish, and that's why my mind is running <clears throat> in all the directions, that means there is an absence of the focus and the clarity about my life. And why there is a lack of focus? Because the mind is obsessed and attached to people, situation, things in my life. So I have to analyze and examine in my head where I went wrong. That, that is the only way we can hammer the delusion. So we are analyzing. And the, once there is an attachment and aversion, what happens? Emotional dependence. One day, you know, Sam called me and uh, he was perspiring. You know, I heard his breath. I said, what the heck you are doing? No, no, I'm walking. So you are so busy that you don't have a time to talk to me in a relaxed manner? I'm not saying which one applies you. The first is foolishness. Second is the scattered mind. Third is uh, the attachment. Fourth is the fourth is emotional dependence. I am seeking security from relations, from people, from friends. Fourth one. Fifth one, it is because of that emotional attachment. It is because of the emotional dependence. And the first four factors, it causes a kind of selfishness in me. And that is where the ego takes over me. And when the ego takes over me, the fifth one, 
what happens? Ego, once the ego takes over, you we paralyze our intellect. There is an intellectual paralysis. That is the sixth factor. And the seventh factor, seeking something other than me. It is the greatest delusion. For six factors results into that I keep on seeking something outside in my life. Why I am seeking something outside in my life? For the sake of peace and happiness. But why I am finding the peace and happiness in outer situations, people and relationship? Because my mind is deluded and it is seeking that peace and happiness in that object, in that event, in that relationship. So now we have seven factors. Never forget these seven factors. You should be one line. <clears throat> Any factor you forget, go back and find out the verse, what it says. So now we are in the seven factors. What should we do? The eighth verse says the challenge, I have to challenge my false assumption. <clears throat> so I just made it a very brief. So what it means by challenging false assumption and wrong notions in my life, the moment your mind says I am busy, Mind, let me find out where you are busy. I am attached. Let me find out where I am attached. No, I have a pain. Let me find out where there is a pain. Any time you have any negative emotions, negative feeling, negative conclusion, oh, that guy, I don't want to talk. <laughs> Ideological differences. <laughs> they are unnecessary. <laughs> unnecessary. Why should I go for it? So it is because of the first seven factors. So I have to challenge those false assumptions in my life all the time. I don't allow those false assumptions in my life. If you allow them, all these first seven factors will take hold of your mind and forget about it. Then you may talk of mindfulness, you may talk of awareness, you may talk of awakening. It will not work. It will not work. Then your ego say, I'm more intelligent, you know. I can prove that you are wrong. So you are becoming judgmental. You are not discerning. You are not doing viveka. Understand, my friends. So be very clear about these first seven factors. And the eighth verse comes and Master says, do you intellectually think, contemplate and reflect your false assumption? It may be because of foolishness. It may be because of emotional dependence. It may be because of intellectual paralysis. It may be because of the ego. It may be because of the attachment and detachment. I have to challenge it. If you don't challenge it, the right knowledge will not settle into your mind <clears throat> and you will find the same stuff. And then you will blame and complain me that nothing is happening because you are in delusion. So why anything should happen? Why the light of this, this room should increase and decrease the size of the room? That is where I started. You understand? Light is the knowledge. Knowledge can remove the ignorance. Knowledge can remove the delusion. But if the mind is already deluded, I, that is, means the impure mind, I have to do the practice. Even if you reach to the highest state, keep on doing the practice. Why? Not everyone is so much motivated as you are so you are going to set an example for others. You see how the entire Eastern wisdom is designed. You keep on doing it. Nobody disturbs me. The moment I wake up in the morning until 6.30, everyone knows he's not going to talk. You set an example. <clears throat> so in times of the delusion, if I do not ask question to my mind, I do not hammer the knowledge, what are my false assumptions, 
nothing is going to work. Even if you keep on doing the practice, so both should go together. That is why the Monday and Thursday session, perhaps sometime I say is more important than the Saturday's session. <clears throat> so we continue to do the practice until the time comes. The mind says, no, I today, the whole day, I was able to maintain the status quo. What is the status quo? The peace and the calmness and the smile and the energy level is all maintained. You will find the inner transformation. You'll find a new level of awareness has taken over the mind. I believe I'm making the things clear. So when you take up the eighth verse, what is the purpose of the self-inquiry? This is what? To, to, to challenge the wrong notion and the false assumption. Now I have already understood the first seven are the false assumption. The mind takes over and it starts creating a life full of the delusion and then I have to suffer. So in this eighth verse, perhaps in the seventh or eighth, yeah, seventh, eighth verse. Master is very tough. He says that, do you know, are you certain about your life? No, death can come anytime. So contemplate on the death. The moment you have a foolishness, you have an anger against someone, you said that just in five minutes you're going to die. What happens to your anger? What happens to your anger? Anger is gone. The master is very tough. This master is very tough. Remembering the inevitability of the death helps develop detachment and objectivity. We are not going to the cremation ground. The contemplation and reflection is required. <clears throat> It reminds us of the fleeting nature of the identities and the relations, prompting self-investigation. I'm going to die. Oh, let me leave my anger and hesitation against someone. Let me look at myself first. And your sensitivity is gone. Your delusion is gone. So our masters have employed e every method possible. So in the eighth verse, the master says this human mind is so exceedingly wonderful. Why it is wonderful? I'm going to a service of my friend who has died. And there I'm talking to my friend about my business project. Did you understand? I don't pay attention. I don't contemplate. I escape that I'm not going to die, even if someone has died. Millions of people die every day. We are not concerned. We have become insensitive. Again, all the seven factors words here. I try to avoid. I want to continue to live in the delusion. That is why the master says, look at the human being. They are great. Someone dies in the neighborhood. We say, one possibility, I, let me find out the possibility that I should not die. It is because of the delusion. <laughs> Think of this. <clears throat> so this verse prompts us to ponder existential questions in the present moment of contemplation. That is why the master says the first is bhajagovindam. First is my self-awareness. I have to drop the delusion after all the rest follows later. So there came the principle that I should always be aware of the real, false, and unreal. I am attached. I become foolish. 
of what appears real but is unreal. That is why I have an attachment. That is why I have an aversion. That is why I have, I have, you know, the emotional dependence. That is why I have an intellectual paralysis. Do you see that how it is based on the principle real, unreal, false? Unreal do not exist. The false appears to exist. My body appears to exist, but it is not. It is constantly changing. What is constantly changing? I cannot say it is real. I cannot say the body exists. Body is becoming, mind is becoming, intellect is becoming, ego is becoming, whatever is becoming is false. What is the basis of that false is the real. And what is that real is the consciousness. The consciousness we cannot say becoming. We have to contemplate, reflect. Now I don't have time to reflect. That in that statement means you are in delusion. <laughs> Do you see that? That very statement means you are in delusion. I am fully busy. That is delusion. Non-seekers will not understand. They will say this teacher is crazy. I'm busy, you know, that you don't understand. Can you find out all those seven factors are together? There's a sense of ego. No, I'm busy, you know, I'm busy. That's why I have to do a lot of things. E ego, identification is there. Why ego is there? Because I'm attached. Why I'm attached? Because there is an emotional dependence. I have to juggle around. I have to contemplate and reflect. Why? To remain relaxed and calm all the time. Can't you do all your professional, personal activities in the state of the calm? Calmness in personal life, calmness in professional life, calmness in family life, calmness when you wake up, calmness when you sleep. This is what the master is saying, self-inquiry, self-inquiry. <clears throat> so understand, my friends, that delusion is causing all this problem. We have to hammer the delusion first by intellectual inquiry by the self-inquiry once i understand do the practice get out of that delusion my master used to say that whenever you are agitated ask your mind what are the three benefits of agitation <laughs> three ben benefits of agitation either to you or to others what are the three benefits of being busy? You're absolutely busy. You're absolutely busy. Three benefits of giving. Giving. Three benefits of anger. Three benefits of stress. Three benefits of obsession. And when you start finding the benefit, they are not benefit. They have a harmful effects. Then there is another way my del of delusion we fall into the into into the abyss of delusion by contradictory statement that you have to find out how many contradictory statements you have made to yourself to others. <clears throat> Can I make one contradictory statement? Oh yes. Uh, the most handsome prime minister recently divorced. Do you remember? Do you, I don't want to name him. <laughs> on one side, you are appreciating most handsome prime minister. On the other side, you are talking about the delusion he has. And that is how we label ourselves. How we label... No, at least, you know, I know that I was right. Only the other is wrong. It is a very subtle level of delusion. I have to get rid of this delusion. If I don't, I don't get rid of the delusion for seven factors. I have to hammer the delusion. First by false, false 
I have to challenge those false assumptions, my friend. And I can bet you, if you really challenge those false assumptions by contemplating and reflection, 50% of your problems in the pain and the suffering dissolves. And the rest 50% by the breath. This is only I'm saying for the seekers. Uh, so you are saving yourself. Yes, if you cannot do it 50%, it means you are not a seeker. <laughs> you are not a seeker. <laughs> so you have to become a seeker. Five days I am in stress, and after five days, a sixth day I remember that I have to hammer the delusion. You are a non-seeker. I'm not pointing to anyone. I'm just saying you have to <laughs> you have to remember. But the moment you have a delusion, you hammer the delusion by contemplation and reflection. And now you have a clarity, you are driving, okay, you have already cleared your mind and you go back to home and you say, first thing, first, I will do the practice, I'll clear completely and I will get out of the delusion. You are a seeker. That means what? That means you have understood that the, once you remove the delusion, by Eastern wisdom, this Eastern wisdom works as a shock absorber. It gives you the emotional freedom there and then. It gives you the wrong notions, how those wrong notions have made my life terrible, horrible. I'm intelligent. That is why I'm in delusion. It will not work. Most handsome prime minister recently divorced. I'm making the same contradictory statement. <laughs> you see, that, that is how I have to work. In, on, on, I have to work on the mind. The mind should not work on me. If the mind is working on me, delusion. I am working on the mind, delusion is gone. So when the delusion is gone, there is always a rise in awareness, my friend. Rise in awareness. I'm definitely rise in awareness kills the delusion. There is a natural state of the calm and peace and love and wisdom. Think of this. So Bhaj Govindam or you can say hammering the delusion, your mind loves the self-inquiry. The mind loves the discipline. Mind loves the discernment. Mind loves the dispassion. Mind loves the devotion, means I recognize that I am little more than my ego. That is devotion. Don't take devotion in terms of religion and God and goddesses. Devotion means a recognition that I'm more than my ego. I keep the company of the wise. I focus on the knowledge of the self. I regularly practice meditation. <clears throat> the life is going to change. <clears throat> I made it very clear what is the goal of this self-inquiry. The eighth step. Eighth verse says, challenge the false assumption means that I have started self-inquiry. And my mind remains focused, who am I? Give me three benefits of the stress. Give me three benefits of the anxiety. Where have I come from? What is the purpose of my life? What is the nature of the world? So when you start the self-inquiry, you will be able to understand each and every step how the delusion takes hold of my life. And if they take hold of my life, I have a problem. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed. 
and uh, just check it. That is why I gave you that. You know, that's why I have changed the instructions. What that instruction is? Eyes are closed. Find the body is comfortable. And I do not spend too much of time on being comfortable and being carefree. Being comfortable and being carefree. You know all the 50 different explanations of being comfortable and being carefree over the last three, more than three years. And if you cannot settle in being comfortable and being carefree, don't worry about it. Don't feel bad about it. You can go back and you can just learn. <coughs> the body is comfortable, body is carefree. Your mind reminds you automatically, naturally. But Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. May there be happiness for all. <coughs> you see, you are changing the very track of the mind. Mind following the track of the delusion by the seven factors. And now the mind is following a track. Both are the thoughts. That is why it is very important to consistent listening and learning with the teacher helps you. No, it is not helping me. Then leave it. So, you know the explanation? May there be happiness for all. How it removes the delusion. You're angry with someone, but the happiness is essential nature of both of us. So is there any fun of being angry and hesitating? You will see the mind is going to change. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu May there be peace for all. Peace for all. <clears throat> it means there is no second which does not have a peace. You see, you will be able to reveal the knowledge from these principles the way I'm revealing to you. No, every time the way I present the session, <clears throat> it is because of the, you follow the journey of the Eastern wisdom, you will find out, oh, this is the way. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Seventh verse Seeking something other than me What that means? Because I'm incomplete, that's why I'm seeking something other than me. I don't take my mind with it. You see the seventh factor? In this mantra, oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm seeking your appreciation. I'm seeking your company. I'm seeking attachment. I'm seeking, oh, long list. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu can you keep your mind on the last line of the verse during the day today? Let there be an auspiciousness. Let there be a blessing and the grace should always be there in everyone's life, including me. First, check yourself. So any situational problem is created by the mind. Otherwise, that situation is an opportunity. The national problem is created by the mind. Otherwise, that relational problem is an opportunity for me to endure. If there is an attachment, I, am, I follow the discernment. And if there is an aversion, I take it as an opportunity to endure it. 
so there is no chance of the religion. Look at it, my friends. Now the time has come. You have to live into that higher awareness. <clears throat> Now looking inside the forehead in the space, body is steady. And Om Shanti, you drop Om Shanti deep inside the forehead in the space. And then you start breathing from the chest through the nostrils. Total expansion and contraction of the chest continue. <laughs> And just check it that how can you endure it? You continue to do it without any movement in the body. Movement in the body is a distraction of the mind. Just your mind go instantly recognize it. It is the second factor of the delusion. Oh my goodness. No, no, I will continue to do it. You have to become a seeker, a higher level of a seeker. Even during the practice, not only at the level of talk and understanding, but in your practice too. And it will change your entire life, I bet you, I promise you. Why should I promise? It is the Eastern wisdom that promises. Continue breathing, quick, short breath, expansion and contraction of the rib case. Otherwise, the entire body remains steady and you are dropping Om Shanti deep inside the forehead and see what happens. Continuously breathing into the rib case, expansion and contraction. And also notice if the flow, the breath for both the nostrils are equal. It's a wonderful state. Your mind will say, no, I will continue to do even for half an hour. It happened to me. It can happen to you also. The time comes, you don't feel as if you have done, oh, I can continue doing it. <clears throat> and that state of the mind means the mind is totally withdrawn. It is not identifying with any of the first seven factors. In fact, this very action you enjoy means what? You are doing a practice where the mind is enjoying. What it means? Not only you endure, not only the mind is within. And you are ready for the next step in the journey.
rhythmic breath expansion and contraction is there you are aware you are also aware of the flow of the breath and you're dropping om shanti body remains steady you see the mind has to take care of lot of awareness of the points during the practice it prevents you from falling back into the delusion and stop it do nothing pay attention to the flow of the breath so if your mind is able to pay attention to the flow of the breath without any interruption can i see that it is absence of distraction that is very important primary level of a seeker says when i do the breathing i feel relaxed and breathing helps me no but i know what is behind the breathing follow the breathing breath flow both the nostrils and if they are equal it is wonderful if they are not even then it is wonderful why i don't want to live in delusion <clears throat> And now is the time to go back inside the forehead om shanti and keep the body steady and start breathing into the belly long and deep in the hissing breath <laughs> It's a longer breath will also help your breath to flow equally through both the nostrils but you are paying attention to all the details why you are paying it attention to all the details not to allow any delusion to take over you during the practice so normally what happens why after even doing 10 years of the practice we do not succeed because one of these seven factors of the delusion keeps supporting the mind during the practice and then we don't find the change in our life so i have to be extraordinarily aware <laughs> long in the hissing breath into the belly and there is no problem even if the mind reacts so i have a tool to endure it by understanding my nostrils are blocked i have a tool to endure it but i will continue to do it are you getting it i believe so all are all our seekers so i need not to think too much please continue saying breath into the belly you hear the noise you also are aware of the flow of the breath to both the nostrils and if the blow flow are equal it will uh, inspire your mind to continue doing it you will see that at the physical level it is the flow of the breath that is equal and at the mental level you check and the mind says no i can continue doing it there is no issue <laughs> mm. 
that is what you need to do when you're doing their practice with an audio file and gradually you can do the entire practice by yourself not modifying because you are understanding the exact practice the way we are doing it Continue breathing, Om Shanti, stillness in the body, awareness of the expansion and the contraction of the belly during the breath. We are all aware, you know, that's how you are aware while driving the car. You're aware of the paddle and the brake and the rear and the front mirror and the lane, everything. That is what we are doing. <clears throat> Your mind will say, no, no, I cannot do it for such a longer period. That is what the statement I made. Handsome, do you remember? That is what the endurance is. You experience the endurance during the practice. You don't understand it only intellectually. <laughs> And stop this, do nothing, awareness of the flow of the breath. We did the two breathing, six minutes each. We're not going to do the third one now. Just maintain your awareness. Yes, we also have a change in experience. We live into that experience and being aware of it. The flow of the nostril is very important because that factor tells us the mind is inside. And at the same time, you may have a surface thought, but that can be dissolved instantly if you have, if your flow of the breath is equal in both the nostrils. You can also find out uh, distractions are less. Your mind continues to be aware of the flow of the breath, the stillness in the body. And there comes an almost like an infinite, unbound space all around. So what happens is that because the, both the flow, the nostrils are equal, the mind uh, fails to label the name in the form, including the body. So that's why we feel a sense of uh, unbound space. And it's natural. Can I feel all the time? Answer is yes. And now, Om Shanti on the 16 segments of the fingers. It is the mind's eye, it is the mind's tongue, it is the mind's ear, it is the mind's skin. 
that is working on Om Shanti in the 16 segments. You know, you st step by step, you purified the mind, you lifted the awareness, and now mind is living within. In that state of the living within, it is very easy to Om Shanti. That is why in the beginning you need not to change the practice until you are capable enough to bring about certain changes based on the factors that you notice in your life. Om Shanti, Om Shanti. And now leave this, move the mind inside the cave of your heart, equilateral triangle pointing upward, move the mind on the side of a triangle dropping on Shanti, check the sink is there, and if the sink is there, then mentally, loudly, mentally, um, pushing the mind inside the triangle to the cave of your heart, mind seemingly stops, Shanti, and you are there. So it's, it's, a, it's a reflection, mind can reflect, there is something which is steady, which doesn't move. That is why I said mind seemingly stops. Mind cannot stop. Self-absorption or silence or peace, whatever you want to say. A nothingness.
Well, if the mind is distracted enough where you forget, you can return to the triangle again, sinking and then move inside. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti 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 Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. Well, share your experiences. Now, how are you, David? <clears throat> Very good, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah, the lesson was um, really resonated with me. So, uh, um, you know, at the end of the tool at the top of our toolbox needs to be contemplation and reflection. Yeah. Uh, so that we can grab that first. Um, as far as the actual practice, it was very, very smooth, very easy flowing and extremely deep. Once we got into heart center, it was, um, I just, I can barely remember your, your words. So thank you. Beautiful. Yes. You rightly pointed out we have to be remember the toolbox is available. Whenever we are surrounded by anxiety, stress, duality, any form of a conflict. So at least contemplation is available all the time. Beautiful. Thank you. How are you, Jerry? Thank you, sir. Well, thank you for that lesson. Um, yeah. 
calm and peace. The meditation was calm and peaceful. The breathing was equal. Um, the takeaway was uh, your words of the mind being inspired. Um, the mind is inspired to see clearly always. Um, so the awareness is heightened and um, there's no, there's, it's just totally uh, detached. It just sees what is. Yes, you are right. You pick up any of the seven factors and you have a clear explanation that why I'm into anxiety, why I have stress, why I have some differences with someone. Out of these seven factors, your mind can pick up one. So when you start contemplating, you can just remove it and then there is a clarity. Beautiful. Thank you, Jerry. How are you, Brandy? Morning. I'm good. Thank you. Um, so my, my, I, I like the practical strategies from the lesson, like the, you know, if you're angry with someone and they tell you you're going to die in five minutes and the three, the three, whatever your master said, um, usefulness is a three benefits. Uh, agitation, right? Yeah. Which I think is the same as the seven. Um, <laughs> so those are, those are helpful today and my meditation is smooth. Thank you. Beautiful. Yes. You pick up any. That's how you share your experiences. Your mind picks up a particular thing. But even if you pick up one thing, it is linked to the rest. It is linked to the rest. And that is the uh, beauty of this journey. So how are you, Samir? And now sometimes something is coming from inside which refuses to think about people, what wrong they are doing, what right they are doing. Mind doesn't like to think about all these things. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. it is not, you can say, it is not interested in yeah. thinking. So when it is not interested what? in thinking, it is a power of discernment. You see, distinguish. That is the change that is coming. It is not judgmental. I am not judgmental. I am using the power of discernment. It is the same intellect, the same alphabet, same thoughts. Beautiful. That is beautiful. How are you, Terry? I don't know how to describe. There was a lot going on. Uh, a lot going on outside or inside? Inside. Inside. Where? In, In the head. Like, like uh, in the heart center. Okay. A lot of work. Studying. Uh, unnecessary. Unnecessary. Stuff. No worries. You have to recognize. You recognize and once you recognize it's a part of the delusion, you enter into a different state. That is what okay. is required. So even if the lot is going on inside your head, I just become aware, oh, it's a part of the delusion. One of these seven factors or many of these, many of these factors are coming together. So you have an intellectual clarity. That is what the eighth step is. So I remove the false assumptions. How are you, Dennis? Uh, thank you, uh, Deep. Uh, very deep meditation, equal breathing, no resistance noticed, uh, almost no thoughts and dark space again. Beautiful. That's another good experience. How are you, Christina? Thank you, I'm well. Um, I, I could almost feel a sense 
during the practice today of something else taking over my ego almost moving to the side so it must be consciousness just in that flow maybe right yeah yeah and you feel totally settled calm peace obviously that's another way to explain it you know we recognize that this is the ego factor which dissolved completely and it, it when the ego is not there, it has to be replaced by the higher consciousness. Beautiful. So then we have Sam. Yeah, who is left? Sam is there. Yes. How are you, Sam, sir? Hello, sir. 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 Um, <clears throat> today I had, uh, at the start of the practice, I had very uh, strongly blocked sinus passages to the point where I was worried that the breathing was going to be a bother, but I slowed myself down. I um, did the breathing at my own pace. By the end, I was able to get a pace that was, let's call it normal. Um, and by the end of it, if you can hear me, uh, everything's totally fine now. Yeah. I'm totally yeah. relaxed. My body's relaxed. Uh, settled into it uh, but the point that I I guess I'm going to make is that it didn't matter what pace you do the breathing at it, my mind was settled the whole time regardless once I realized right what I needed to do and I felt very grounded and um, yes yeah thank you it's a beautiful practice. Yes, I told you that even in cases nostrils are blocked and you endure it and you do it, you will discover it is the 80% of the mind that works on even the sinuses. It's because of your awareness. So yes, it is a wonderful, beautiful. How are you, Evo? Uh, thank you, sir. Well, I'm good. Uh, it's like that I'm collecting myself from wherever the mind was scattered. And it was a state when it was like calm and peaceful. At that time, I realized that how much my mind was scattered. In the daytime, like when I'm already scattered, I could not able to realize that the mind is scattered and it's, uh, I'm not able to see that thing when I'm already in that state. But when I'm calm and peaceful, then I can only realize that. Yes, you raise a beautiful point. We have been so much habituated by the mind, heavily conditioned life. Do not realize that my mind is distracted. This is that, that is what you want to say. And that makes me absolutely busy. That takes me to the anxiety. That takes me to the reaction. And then I say, you know, everything in the life is crazy. So yes, you are right. What he says is worth, worth contemplating and reflecting that we follow a mechanical and a habitual routine in which we do not realize that I'm so much preoccupied by a lot of the thoughts. That is also a work of ego. That is also a work of ego. Where are you hiding a shock in the dark? Ah, now it is light. Yes, now I see you. Namaste. Namaste, sir. Uh, sir, I am good, peaceful, and calm. And contemplation and reflection is going on. Yes, yes. Everything is fine. Thank you. Yes, it should continue. Contemplation and reflection should continue to give rise to a new level of awareness. Contemplation and reflection are very good. Thank you, everyone. Stephen, perhaps, you know, internet connection. He is not there, so thank you. Namaste, sir. Namaste. 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 Nam